Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach this robot to pick and place components using this gripper. Now in the previous video, we modeled this gripper and tested it with this robot. So what you can do is you can go back to watch part one and you can create this component and this layout, or you can find links to these files in the video description so you can follow along with this tutorial. So let's go ahead and add the component we want the robot to pick up to the 3D world. I'll go to the eCatalog panel, expand models by type, expand products and containers, then click visual components, and let's add a can to the 3D world, so I'll drag it into my layout. Now the can is a bit outside the reach of the robot right now, it's a bit too low, so let's add a table and then put this can on top of it. So I'll go back to the eCatalog panel, and under models by type I'll click interior facilities. Let's now search for a table. And we have a couple items, let's add table A, so I'll drag that into my 3D world, and move the table within reach of the robot, like so. Let's now put the can on top of the table. So what I'll do is I'll select the can in the 3D world. I'm then going to hold on the shift key and now I can point at the bottom geometry of the can like so to use a shortcut for snapping it anywhere in the 3D world. So I'll now hold on the left mouse button. Notice I can now drag the can anywhere I want. So let's drag it on top of the table. And let's actually just put the can right there so the robot can reach it. And we can now start programming the robot to pick up this can. So I'm going to press the escape key to exit out of that shortcut command. I'll then go to the program tab and I'll use the jog command to select the robot in the 3D world. Let's so now define the base and tool of the robot we want to use. So in the jog panel, I'll set base to base 1. And for tool, let's use the imported tool frame from the gripper called gripper tool underscore 1. And since we're going to be signaling a grasp and release action, you know, this imported tool frame is not mapped to any uh, action right now in the robot. So what we can do, let's go to the component properties panel. And notice there's a section here called actions configuration. I'll expand that. You can see we send out an output signal in the robot to signal an action. So let's actually use signal 1. And we can see when we send out a true value for signal 1, it signals a grasp action, and that's using tool 1 in the robot. So it's going to detect a component within this volume size, and then it's going to attach that component to the mount plate or the component container behavior in the robot. And when the signal value is false, it's going to release the component either to the 3D world or to another component or a component that has a container, for example, a conveyor path. Now we do cover this in detail in other video tutorials, which you can find a link to in the video or in one of the playlists. So to make things easy, we already know that tool 1 is mapped to this grass release section, so all we have to do is just move tool 1 to the same location as our imported tool frame. To do that, I'll go to the 3D world toolbar, I'll then click the frame types arrow here, and I'm going to turn on tool frames in the 3D world, so I'm going to select this robot tools checkbox, and we can see there's the imported tool frame, and here are the native tool frames in the robot. So we need to move one of those tools to this location here. I'll go to the jog panel, and in the tool property, I will select tool 1 here, then click the gear icon to select the tool frame in the 3D world, and notice I'm no longer in jog mode, I'm now in move mode, and I have the tool 1 selected. I'll now go to the tools group, click snap, and I want to snap tool 1 to where gripper tool 1 is, so let's make sure our snap type is frame, which you can select here in the tool snap task pane. I'll now point at gripper tool 1. Notice it lets me select it, so that preview looks good. And now tool 1 is at the same location as gripper tool 1, so when we signal a grasp action, it will create that detection size and detect the can and then grasp that can and attach it to the robot. Let's now go back to jog mode, so you could either go to manipulation group and click jog, or you can just click the jog panel here and notice we're right back in jog mode. So now when I move uh, this plane here, notice I'm moving or jogging the robot, I'm not moving the tool frame anymore. Which is a bad way to put it because technically you are moving the tool frame, it's just that you're moving the robot based on this tool center point here. But let's get back on the task. So we want to pick up this can, so let's actually use the snap command. So go back to the tools group, click snap, and now notice my snap type is edge and face, and notice I'm snapping that tool center point, which also moves the robot. So we want to snap the robot to that top face center of the can there. So the preview looks good, so I'll just click, and now the robot moves to that location. Now we probably want to pick uh, a little bit below the top face center of the can, so I'll use the move tool, and just move the tool down along the z-axis, like so. And that looks fine. And let's use the jog command to interact with the gripper's joints, so let's actually open the clamps a bit. And right about there looks fine. So we don't want to crush the can in the center, let's just pick from the top here. So to teach this location, let's go to the program editor panel. Now add this as a linear motion statement. And when we go down to linear motion statement, we want to close the clamps. So I'm going to add a set binary output statement. 
And remember where we mapped that action signal for the joint of the gripper to 100. And with a false value, that means the clamps will open up. So let's actually go to the show group and turn these signals on. You can see there's those signals again. So we have that open state signal, the closed state signal, and the action signal. And this action signal is responsible for opening and closing the clamps. So a true value will close the clamps, return them to their minimum value. And a false value will open the clamps, return them to their max value. In this case, we want the clamps to close when they go down to pick up the cans. So let's actually set the output value to be true for 100. And if I zoom out, you can see that that action signal is mapped to signal 100 here. It's an output statement. So let's go ahead and hide this. Go back to our can. And then after we signal the closing of the clamp, let's now signal that grasp action. So I'm going to add another set binary output statement. And the output port of 1 for grasping. Let's make sure the output value is true to signal a grasp action. Let's then lift up the can. So I'll just move along these z-axis up here. This now teaches us the retract and approach position. So I'm going to add a linear motion statement and a point-to-point -point motion statement. So this P3 position, that will be my approach position to the can. So I'll make that the first statement. So I'll drag it to the front. We're at the start of the main routine. And let's see how this works. So the robot will first go to P3. It will go down to P1. And we notice when the robot goes down, we want the clamps to be open. So after the robot goes to P3, let's have the clamps of the, of the gripper be open. So I'm going to add a set binary output statement. And let's set the output port for 100 for the action signal. Remember, if the output value is false, you know, the joints will go to their max value. So I'm going to leave this checkbox here for output value unchecked. And I want to wait for the clamps to fully open. So I'm going to go back to the program editor panel and add a wait for binary input statement. And we're going to wait for signal 101, which is mapped to that open state signal. And we want the input value to be true so we know that the clamps are open. The robot will then go down to P1. And then we want the clamps to close, so that's why we have this output signal of 100 set to true. And we want to wait for the clamps to close, so let's add a wait for binary input statement. And that signal action is mapped to 102. And make sure you select the input value here to be true. Then we're going to signal the grasp action, and the robot goes back up. So let's reset the simulation and run it to see how this works. The robot go to P3, the clamps open, the clamps close, and the robot picks up the can. Great. But let's zoom in a bit. We can see that the clamps close too far and they're now inside the can, so they essentially would crush the can. So what we need to do is change the minimum limit or the minimum value for the gripper's joints so when they're at their minimum value, you know, they're right about here, they're not crushing the can. So to figure that out, let's get the dimensions of this can and then use the joint properties for this gripper to have the right minimum value for its closed state. So I'm going to reset the simulation. And since we're going to be configuring the layout, I'll go back to the Home tab. And let's now take a measurement of the, t of the can. So I'll go to the Tools group here, click the Measure tool, and let's go and measure the bound box of the can. So in the Measure task pane, make sure you have the snap type set to bound. Let's now do the top corner or the top face of the can's volume space. So I'll use a corner point there and a corner point there. And we can see it's a difference of about 70 millimeters. So we can see the measurement here in the output panel. So we probably want to half this. So it's at 70.69, so 70.7. So in the measure task, I'm going to click close. I then have to select the gripper, like so. And now the component properties panel, I promised in the previous video to talk more about these. So this J1 value sets the current value of the joint. So if I type in 50 now, you can see that now the clamps are open, but I can set J1 back to zero and now they're closed. Now for this open property here, J1 open, this is setting the value or the max value of this joint when you want the uh, clamps to be open and for their max value. So right now the max value is set to 50 so it can't go more than that. But for the J1 closed state, right now it's set to 0. So instead of crushing the can, we need to add more value to this. We need the minimum value to be a bit greater than 0. So we know that we need to add the value of the can. It's dimension along that y-axis or its length, so it was 70.7, but we need to half this. So do 70.7 divided by 2. If I press the Enter key now, it's now 35.35. And now this is the new minimum value for this J1 joint. So this J1 close property, this defines the minimum value for the joint. And this J1 open property defines the max value for the joint. And here you can see J1, this is its current value. So even if a user does not have access to the modeling tab, you can still control the min and max value of this joint. 
So let's now reset the simulation just to make sure the robot and the gripper is at its default or initial joint configuration of this. And now when the robot picks up the can, let's see the magic. So I'll run the simulation, clamps open, picks up the can, and it does not crush the can. You can see it's now at that min value we set in this J1 close property here. Great. Let's now teach the robot to place the can back on the table. So I'll go to the program tab, and I'll use the jaw command to select the robot. And let's see, we used P1 to go down to pick up the can. We then signaled the closing of the clamps. We then waited for the clamps to close. We then signaled the grasp action, and then we lifted back up to P2. So let's actually copy statements P1 all the way down to P2. So I'm going to hold on the shift key now and select the last statement so I now have all these statements selected. I'll then right click, then click copy to copy the statements. And we want to insert that new set of statements after P2. So I'm going to add a comment here to separate them and say this is the start of my place. I'll then right click and click paste and now I've just copied and pasted those statements so the robot goes down to P1 and then it signals the closing of the clamps. So in this case we want to open them so we need to signal a false value. So I'll clear the output value checkbox here. So now this action signal that's mapped to signal 100 in the robot will then signal for the clamps to be at their max value. Then we're going to wait for signal 101 so let's actually change that output port, the input port to be 101. And then for our set binary output statement for the grasp action, we need this to be a release action. So for the output value, I'm going to clear the checkbox here because a false value will signal a release action. And then we'll go back up to P2 and everything should be fine. So let's actually reset. I'm sorry, reset. Run the simulation again. Clamps open. And yep, the robot picks and places the can. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.